crazy how many athletes don't even know that they're like going through something that's really common. You know, I know you have these conversations too, where it's like, man, I thought I was the only one going through this. So the result starts with number one, being able to get through some of the emotional ups and downs of that fall from grace from being an athlete. Like if you can check that box of saying, okay, I get it. I got my whole life ahead of me to do great things. This is common. You know, I'm not the only one going through this. That makes all the difference in the world. So that's the first thing. And whenever I'm working with someone, we address that first. And then we start to get into, okay, now that we are excited about the the possibility of what lies ahead, about what you can create for yourself, I always tell people, we're fortunate to live in this time where you can customize your life. Look what you and I are doing. Like, you and I might be working somewhere that we probably didn't enjoy too much if this was 10, 20 years ago. But because we're living in this time, we can create whatever we want. Welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show with Jonathan Jones. Here you will learn how to start, launch, and monetize your podcast. In addition to hearing the latest trends and the latest and greatest things happening in the podcast industry. Are you ready? What's going on, family? Welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show. And this is your number one source for podcast news, podcast how-tos, and also interviews. All right. Before we get into the show, I want to just let you all know if you're a speaker, you're a coach, you're a consultant, you need to make sure that you're in the training that I have coming up. You can register for the training at getpaidwithpodcasting.com because in that training, I'm going to show you how to explode your leads, how to accelerate your credibility, and how to take your voice and turn it into a profitable business. All right. So go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com. Now back to the show. So, man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for today just to be able to have, have this conversation uh, with, with this gentleman who he, he's a friend, he's a colleague, and we even stay in the same state now. Yeah, we stay in the same, same state now. So that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But uh, <laughs> this guy, I would say, is definitely, definitely, you know, what the expert when it comes to showing individuals how to successfully make a transition and how to successfully pivot. Right. So I'm going to welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show. None other. None other. I, I, I want to call you TD. I want. Does anybody call you TD? Nah, man. You know what? People call me uh, TJ. My full name is Taj Deshaun Johnson. I go by Taj Deshaun. That's a long uh. story. Man. You can call me TD. You be the first person to call me TD. So why not? I received that. Todd Deshaun. I'm just saying it just makes sense. TD, because I mean you money. So man, you know come man? on. You hyping me up, man. Come yeah. on, bro. You hyping me up. Man, yeah, man. There, there it is, man. Well, okay. Well, Taj, go go ahead, man. Take the mic and, and, and let the people know just, just a little bit about you if, if this might be their first introduction to you. So please, you have the floor. For sure, man. Before I do that, I gotta say, honored to be here with you, man. I was telling you before we even hit record. We've been connected for quite some time, and I see the work that you're doing, man, especially now uh, in this podcast space. And when I see you going into schools and speaking and educating the athletes coming up behind us, I know you help more than just athletes. But when I see you educating athletes, to me, I think about if I was in school and somebody came in and told me that I need to start a podcast to grow my brand, especially with all the NIL stuff. Man, it's just it's just phenomenal to see. So honored to be here. Love the work you're doing, brother. Uh and yeah, man, I've been looking forward to this all day. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Taj Deshaun, founder of Thrive After Sports, been uh, coaching athletes one-on-one and uh, in a group setting since 2018, and uh, started my podcast, Thrive After Sports, in, in 2019, just as a way to help get the message out, um, you know, interviewing great people like Jonathan, and uh, recently published, not recently, it's been almost two years now, published my first book, Thrive After Sports, which you see behind me, helping athletes dominate the game of life. And I uh, got this other book right here, Athlete to Entrepreneur. This is volume one. We got volume two coming out soon, just bringing a bunch of great people together to share their stories. And really, man, aside from helping athletes transition, I'm on a mission also to help athletes just carve out their own lanes and entrepreneurship. That's why I have so much respect for what you do, because having a podcast is a key component, especially in this day and age. So that's what I'm up to. I wear a few different hats. I'm also vice president of the publishing company, self-published in 30 days, same company that helped me publish my book. And uh, yeah, man, excited for the conversation today. Appreciate you for having me. 
Yeah, man. Most most definitely. Most definitely. Man, how how does how does one do all that you do, Taj? How, how does one person do all that, bro? Because you listed off like 35 different things. How <laughs> how is that possible for, for one individual to be able to um you know do do the work that you do? Talk to us, man. People need people need some strategies out here. Man, well, okay. Uh, we'll we'll start with the entrepreneur crowd first. Well, you know this, man, as a as an athlete, we're used to having a lot on our plate. And so I think just having that background of, you know, playing at the collegiate level, um, learning how to manage things and, and be able to kind of understand myself, too. I know, like for me, I'm a morning person, so I try to do the, the majority of my work in the morning or I know I need to get a workout in in the middle of the day. I might even mess around and take a nap in the middle of the day if I need to for 20, 30 minutes, 45 minutes if necessary. So I think it's just a matter of figuring out what works best for you. For me, it's, it's been a lot of trial and error. I've had a lot of sleepless nights, but I'm now at a point where I'm living a more balanced lifestyle to be able to do the things I need to do without crashing and burning. So, and then having good people in your corner, as you know, Jonathan, that's key. You got to have support. I, I tried to do everything by myself in the beginning and ended up, you know, uh, in a real tough spot. So <laughs> having good people around you definitely makes a world of difference. Yeah, man. Good good people around you and and, and them naps, bro, them naps are so clutch. <laughs> Them, them, them naps are necessary and essential. Okay, Be, beyond necessary and, and, and beyond essential, man. But just uh, you know, as as you're here, Taj, I, I want you to rewind, rewind the clock back, man, because you know somebody t- tapping in, somebody tuning in. They could be a speak, they could be a coach, they could be a consultant, but they could be a you know an athlete or former athlete. So walk walk us back in in your story. Like let's go back to college, right? Because that's that's the time where I'm pretty sure it is, is there's some uncertainty. So so start start there, Ty. Start there. Start there. Yeah, that's a great starting point, man. Um, to me, the uncertainty didn't even come until I came back home from college because I was just thinking, I was naive, man. I was like, all right, I got this free education paid for. As soon as I come back home, I'm going to be good to go. I got this, you know, no college debt. Everybody's going to be like just waiting to give me a job. And obviously that was not the case. So I come home from school, no plan, uh, and I quickly found myself in this in this dark place because I'm like, all right, I'm waking up every day back home in my childhood bedroom. Don't get me wrong, I'm grateful to my parents for allowing me to move back in and giving me time to get on my feet. But, you know, I'm waking up every day like, man, my little Pop Warner trophies and, you know, how did I end up back at square one and arguably in, in a, a more difficult spot because now I don't even have anything to look forward to or aspire to be. And I think that's common for a lot of athletes. And that was definitely the case for me. Just no game plan, no idea where to start. And um, it led to a lot of depression, man. I always tell people I, I had an extended college because all I was doing for really that first six months when I came back home was just drinking a lot, was just going out and partying because I was trying to mask what I was feeling. And, um, you know, I, I didn't really have anything else to do. I didn't even know where to start. So definitely tough, man. It, it was a rough, a rough road, but it led to everything I'm doing now. So I guess, you know, God always has a plan when it's all said and done, as you know. Yeah, I got you. Taj, hold on. Wait, man. We can't brush past that, man. Hold on, Taj. Slow down. <laughs> okay. slow, slow down, man. You're about to get a ticket out here in these streets. How, so from, from being in a spot, being in a spot to where you said, you know, you had the extended college and being in a spot to where, like, you, you were facing that depression, like, where was the where was the eye-opening moment? Or, like, what was it that happened for you to be able to, you know, identify uh like i I don't want to call it a way out because that sounds so dramatic but like where where was that little sliver of 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 light that you were like okay i need maybe i can check this out or try this yeah i appreciate that man i appreciate you pulling that out too that's why i like listening to your show man in case nobody's told you lately you're a great host man i listen to your show and i'm like how can i be a better host when i'm interviewing people because you be pulling out those nuggets bro um the thing thing for me was oh i just call it like it is man I think for me, I had a moment where, okay, so I woke up one morning after a night of drinking, of course, and it's like noon and you, you know, whether you drink or not, if you wake up at noon, you just feel terrible. Your day's already off to a bad start. You had a hangover on top of that. So I'm just like, I can't keep living this way. I have to figure something out. So then I started reaching out uh, for help and I know you understand the power of LinkedIn. So I got on LinkedIn because someone told me that's a great way to start networking, get your feet in the door. So I immediately built up my LinkedIn profile. And this was 20, really 2014 when I started getting serious about LinkedIn. It started 
looking for people who I could connect with and just get some kind of idea for, you know, how to start doing something positive, mainly like, okay, how do I create a resume? Um, how do I even apply for a job? How do I get my foot in the door? And so I started out in sales because sales jobs are always hiring, especially athletes, and uh, realized that sales wasn't, you know, I enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed the money because it got me back on my feet and I was able to move out and, and feel like a man again. But I knew I had to find something that was more fulfilling to me. So I made a pivot into recruiting. The pivot into recruiting is where I realized, oh, I actually enjoy helping people. I can still be competitive with myself. I can still put up numbers, make money. But I was helping people find jobs and, you know, put food on the table for their families, which is very fulfilling. And then that that's a long story. We can get into that. But being in recruiting is what ultimately opened my eyes to see that, OK, I can take these skills that I'm learning and now branch out and help athletes uh, overcome some of the things that I had gone through. Because at that point, I had gotten back on my feet. And I was looking for a way to serve in a greater capacity because I felt like I was being called to do so, you know. Yeah, man. I mean, that, I, I think that's that's one of the things that, that's really dope and that, you know, who, whoever out there is listening is one, one thing I want you just to just to take into account of, of what Taj just said is that you have no wasted experiences. Right. Like he said, he w was working one job then he went to another job and then he took both of those skill sets and then now he applied it to what he's doing. So just realize that just realize and take an inventory of your life and like what you've done, what you've accomplished, what you've been faced with and see how that applies to where you are. Uh, but man, OK, so OK, so we, we went out, we, we, we worked, was working in sales, then was working in recruiting. And it's, it's funny as I'm listening to not funny, but just ironic as I'm listening to these these jobs that you're saying, like like these are the jobs to where like you have to get after it. And just tying those in with you know you being a former athlete it just like it, it it makes sense it just makes sense Taj I'm like okay the sales you know you got to go you got to you know you got to get the sale you got to sell to people then the recruiting lord I'd be getting blown up by the recruiters on LinkedIn so I I, <laughs> I, I, I can only imagine uh man but how did how did you know how did you know that you would be feeling fulfilled by doing the work that you're doing now before Man, you were doing this goes, work it goes back to what you just said where one experience leads to another and you start to build this this skill set and then things are revealed to you as you continue to just sharpen your skills in certain areas so for me honestly i didn't know this was something that just kind of popped into my head one day because i was in the recruiting role and i had a lot of people because they saw from the outside looking in like okay you know, Taj is a few years removed from, from college now. It seems like he's figured it out. He's making money. You know, he's living in San Diego. So from the outside looking in, everybody's like, at least, you know, former teammates, people I grew up with, they would reach out like, uh, man, I need some help. I'm back home working at Home Depot. Or, you know, like, I'm still unemployed. I'm still trying to figure it out. Like, how did you even get a job? You know, I was, I was doing stuff like that, just having conversations. And this was 2017 going into 2018. And so I'm looking around and... I'm doing research around like what's available for former athletes. You know, I didn't come across what you were doing until a couple years later because I know you were you were very active during that time. But maybe my research skills weren't where they need to be. But that's another story. But so what happened was, um, like, I would go on the NCAA website and I would see like articles. You know, this is how you prepare for a job interview. And I'm like, that's great and everything, but that doesn't really address the underlying issues of, you know, loss of identity and all the stuff that we've been talking about for years. Like, it doesn't address that. So I'm like, I want to put together some curriculum that can help people on a holistic level actually get through the transition and understand what they're dealing with so that they can even get to a point where they're ready to start mapping out a career and finding things. And so at that point, once I once that was revealed to me, I was like, I couldn't ignore it. So I started like getting really serious about developing relationships with people who were doing similar things. And I kept, you know, I was working with people just trying to perfect my craft and working with athletes for free, and having them send referrals to me to work with other athletes so I could really perfect what I was doing. And, you know, really in 2018 is when I, uh, I quit my job and just started doing this full time and had to do what I had to do along the way. You know how it is that the grind of an entrepreneur, you got to pick up part time jobs to make mm -hmm. ends meet sometimes. And, but over the past four, uh, you know, four or five years, just stay consistent with it, man. And uh, this has been the thing to me where I'm like, man, this is it. And I enjoy doing it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't still be doing it if I didn't enjoy it, you know? Yeah, 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 for sure. 
man what taj what what was going through your mind when you was doing this work for free man like what 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 were you <laughs> like like let like let, let us in your head like what were you thinking about when you were out here um when when you know you were you were you were investing time you were investing energy but you were doing this work for free and i'm gonna assume correct me if i'm wrong please correct me i have no problem correct me uh and i'm gonna assume that you you were doing this for free with some time that you had throughout the day but then probably running back and forth between doing this type job and that type job so what was going through your mind man talk to us man everybody thought i was crazy and i thought i was crazy at times too because like you said i was working with a lot of athletes for free with the understanding that so this is how it evolved it started out with i need to do this for free so that i could perfect my craft and make sure i'm actually getting results and make adjustments to how i approach it so I did that with the first, you know, few athletes I worked with. And then at a certain point, I'm like, wait a minute, I just quit my job. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure out how to make some money off of this. But the ultimate goal, which this is the place that I reach now, so we'll come back to this, but I never wanted to charge, especially athletes coming out of college. I wanted to find a way where universities or sponsors could sponsor me to do this work. And I've reached that point finally after, you know, four or five years. But I was, it was very scary, man, because you know, there would be athletes who were in jobs who, you know, I would start charging them at first. Or if someone could afford to work with me, I was very transparent. Like, hey, if you're in a job, you're making 50, 60 K a year, but you're unhappy and you need to make a pivot. If you're able to pay me for these services, that's going to sponsor someone who maybe doesn't have a job. So it was kind of like a one to one model where the people who could afford to work with me. I'll be transparent. They would pay because I was getting them results and that would sponsor people that I could work with for free. And then, as you know, in this game of entrepreneurship, you got to make pivots. So that goes into, OK, I'll get paid to do a speaking gig here, or even a virtual speaking gig. Or, you know, you branch into different avenues with, you know, now I'm selling books and helping other people write and sell books. Um, and now I'm at a point where because of the partnerships, like we were just talking about Jonathan Orr with ATS or Miriam Glaze at Athlete Soul, I'm able to work with the athletes, but get sponsored to do this work. Or you start having universities who recognize the work that's being done and they want to make donations or they want to sponsor this work to work to work with their student athletes so it all came together and i knew early on that if i stayed with it long enough um opportunities would reveal themselves and i would create my own opportunities in order to actually earn a living off of this but it was very very scary early on because especially when you got pressure from outside looking in you know at one point i had to move back in with my family um, and this is after moving out after college, I moved back in when I really started doing this because wasn't making any money. So hard times, man, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Man, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, man. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I, I want to pull out some things. So first of all, you said, you, you said, you, you said there was the outside pressure because people thought you were crazy and then I, i'm gonna i'm gonna assume that it was for an extended period of time that you were doing this work for free because you said you started to think you were crazy for doing the work for free right that was the first that's the first bullet check okay then <laughs> then the next thing that you said the next thing that you said was uh then even in addition to to you doing that you know you're working to to perfect what what you were doing and, and all of that and then it got to a point to where you were finally able to secure so you were able to secure a sponsorship because people saw the work that you were doing taj i want to i want to talk to the people really quick i want to let them know you all just heard what he said he said he took the time to perfect his craft okay he took the time he invested energy he even did case studies with the people that he brought in and then he got them the results okay okay taj i want to ask you two questions i'm gonna ask one at a Sorry. time i'm gonna ask one at a time so so one you said you were able to get them results what what was the result you were able to get the individual who came and started working with you yeah the main it's still the results i'm getting to this day so the first thing is being able to it's crazy how many athletes don't even know that they're like going through something that's really common you know i know you have these conversations too where it's like man i thought i was the only one going through this so the result starts with number one, being able to get through some of the emotional ups and downs of that fall from grace from being an athlete. Like if you can check that box of saying, okay, I get it. I got my whole life ahead of me to do great things. This is common. You know, I'm not the only one going through this. That makes all the difference in the world. So that's the first thing. And whenever I'm working with someone, we address that first. And then we start to get into, 
okay, now that we are excited about the the possibility of what lies ahead, about what you can create for yourself, I always tell people, we're fortunate to live in this time where you can customize your life. Look at what you and I are doing. Like, you and I might be working somewhere that we probably didn't enjoy too much if this was 10, 20 years ago, but because we're living in this time, we can create whatever we want. And so for me, the results is getting through the transition, identifying what you want. If you have to take a job or do what you need to do in the meantime until you can get there, do what you got to do. I, I'll help athletes get set up with that, but I'm fo focused on that long-term vision of what it is that they really want to do. Um, what can be their new mission? What, what can they wake up every day and be just as excited about as they were when they were playing their sport? And then once we have that locked into place, I go into, I have this great network of people like yourself who are doing, you know, former athletes who are up to big things. Now I can plug them into that network. Okay, you want to do this? Okay, you want to start a podcast? You need to talk to Jonathan. You want to get into real estate? Here, here, there's this list of athletes and people who are killing it as real estate investors or whatever they're doing. So it's about, it's about helping people find the clarity and then plug them into other people who can be mentors and resources to them. So those are some of the results, man. And it's, you know, everybody's different because everybody wants to do different things. Everybody has different personal challenges that they're going through. Uh, and I'm the type of person that likes to meet people where they're at. You know, I'm not, I'm not on some like, oh, you're an athlete. So you should just go into sales like I did, or you should just be a coach. Like every human being is wired differently, as you know. So <laughs> That's yeah. a different topic for a different day, though. You, you know what I'm yeah. talking no, about. No, no, no. I mean, you, you're definitely spot on because that's the that's the instant thing everybody thinks of. And they don't necessarily think a person development coach like, oh, you used to be a football player. Oh, well, you should go on the sidelines and you should do It's like, <laughs> bro, I'm, you know, I'm 30, I'm 40. I'm however old. I can't be a GA right now. Like, that's not cute. Like, I got a family right. to provide for. <laughs> uh, but man, but you, but one thing you really hit on and I really like what you just said was, that we have the ability to customize our life. Mm -hmm. That's a bar. That's a bar bar. Okay. Like the Olympic bar in the weight room bar, because people have to really understand, bro, we have that option and we have that choice. It just comes with a little bit of work, but you have that choice. And you were talking about, you know, what it is at the end of the day, it's, it's just what that, what that image says behind you. It's man, it's, it's all about being able to thrive after sports, man. It's all about being able to thrive after sports. The second question I want to ask you, I didn't forget. I thought I was going to. I did not. You said you've been able to partner with companies. You were able to secure a sponsorship. Taj, the people out here, they would want me to ask, okay? They would want me to ask. They would say, well, how does one secure a sponsorship, Taj? How does one secure a sponsorship for the work that they're doing? Mm. Wow. All right. Now, being transparent with this, this is something that I'm still learning on the fly. So there are certain situations where I have sponsorships that are indefinite, meaning if I'm doing one on one coaching, I know that I can lean on athlete soul because they'll sponsor my work because that's their specialty is the one on one coaching. I know that, uh, especially with this new partnership with Jonathan or at ATS, if I'm doing group coaching, especially if these athletes are coming out of the university and they need group coaching, I know that I can rely on ATS to sponsor that work when it comes to universities. As you know, there's so many different factors, uh, when it, especially when it comes to budgets. But at the end of the day, it comes down to the right relationships. And I always tell people, you never want to come to. I'm just going to use universities as an example because, um, you know, a lot of people listening to your podcast may be athletes or, you know, whatever the case may be, or trying to or trying to you know athlete entrepreneurs. So I would say you got to find the right relationships and connect with people on a genuine level. You don't necessarily just want to hit somebody up with a proposal. You know, I can do this for this amount versus like, you know, as an example, I give more books away these days than I'm selling because I'm looking to get the books into the right hands. If I get the book into someone who's in an athletic department or the life skills coordinator and Jonathan, you, you've written several books. I already know, you know where I'm going with this. You get that free book into, into the right person's hands that leads to hundreds if not thousands of books being sold and paid for because you got the free book into the right person's hand. Um, in terms of like corporate sponsors and different businesses and organizations, that's a realm that I'm really trying to educate myself in, to be honest with you. But I, I have the same approach. I'm trying to find who's in what position with this company. Do they do something with athletes? You know, and if I can connect with that person on a genuine level and build a relationship, then they might sponsor me to do this event or this type of work. But um, 
yeah, I don't claim to be an expert with the sponsorships. I'm just all about relationships and that leads to sponsorships. So <laughs> that's yeah. the best way I can put it. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, you really, you really, you really just hit, hit on hit on some hit on some good game because I, I I think a lot of times it's it's easy to see to you know for for us to look up and see Taj got this partnership or Taj did that and it's just like one one, one thing I I know is so dangerous but the mind just does it. It's like oh, how did he get that sponsorship? Then the next thought is how can I get that sponsorship? And then it's like. Well, I can do what he did, but then I, I think the part where we have to draw the line of separation is going back to what you said earlier. You were taking the time to share your resources and taking the time to coach and to provide your services for free. Then you took time and then continued to perfect the program. And then you continue to build other relationships while all this was going on. So then, yeah, the relationship that you had helping an athlete who might have been struggling to transition then now they have the job at whatever company or university or whoever then of course it makes sense for you to be one of the first people to get the sponsorship or the endorsement or whatever it might be because you help that person get to an elevated position so people man oh, tosh people gotta be careful out here in these streets man <laughs> They gotta be careful, man. It's 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 easy to compare, man. And then you know, with just being sports minded, it's it's easy, man. It's easy. It is, man. I you know what? I had to make that shift a while back, especially being younger. You know, like especially when you come out and you're around college age, you see certain things happening with people. Um, like being 23, 24, and I even see like my peers, like, man, they got a job. Where? Like, how they doing that? I'm still yeah i'm still on my mama's couch you know and, and if you're not careful as we as we evolve and obviously you and i've been out of college for a little while now so as you grow into a more mature adult you start to realize that attitude doesn't serve me instead of i can look at what people are doing and be like man that's great i should be inspired by that and you know try to connect with them instead of comparing myself or you know but i love what you said about like if you look at it with that lens of oh so and so did this I wonder how they did that. Let me connect with them. Maybe let me have a conversation with them, you know, just to see what could happen. So, yeah, man. Collaborate. Don't don't compare. Yeah. Collaborate. Don't compare, folks. Yeah. All, all day, man. All day. All day. So, Taj, man, I, I, I want you to think for, for, for a second, man, just about like because you I mean, you wrote the book Athlete to Entrepreneur. So from you being an athlete to now you being full fledged entrepreneur, like what what would you say has been like the biggest lesson or lessons that you've seen transition from one aspect to the other man oh you mean like um what skills that i brought over yeah 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 yeah, yeah yeah what skills my bad what skills what skills well the main thing the first thing that comes to mind is the power of teamwork like we were talking about earlier me not knowing anything about business and like i always say i don't have it all figured out today but early on not understanding how business really works it doesn't really make sense like it's not sustainable long term to be a solopreneur which is crazy because as athletes we come from that background of being in a team environment um even having coaches and mentors like you need that in life you need people above you who can pull you up who can call you out on things who can coach you who can help develop you and you need a team around you who's running running in the same direction you know what i mean like that's key so you need you need mentors, you need guides, you need uh, coaches, you need people around you who can help you on the mission. Um, I think the main thing, another big thing that I took from athletics is just like not quitting. You know what I mean? Like there's certain times when you should quit. You know, I quit many like as an example, I quit a lot of sports. I played baseball, basketball. I played all those sports when I was little and I quit all those sports. But the one that I stuck with is football because I enjoy football the most. And that's why I got a football scholarship. Um, that's why you got a basketball scholarship. So it's like, at the end of the day, you know, we have so many skills and that's why I'm really on kind of like this new mission lately of talking about athletes becoming entrepreneurs. And that's why, like I said, I love what you're doing, giving them tools, especially in the podcast space to be able to get their name out there and get their mission out there. But, um, I went a few different directions, man, but that's, that's the main things I would say. Like there's so many transferable skills from, from being an athlete to an entrepreneur. Yeah, you. I mean, you. You, you definitely. You definitely hit on it, man. You, you definitely, de def definitely hit the nail. Hit the nail on the head. All right. So, I want. I want you. I want you to talk about your podcast and why you decided to. 
why you decided to to start the podcast, man. Talk 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 about that, Tosh. Talk about that. I started my podcast because what I was doing early on was once I started actually getting paid to do coaching early on, I was like, man, I need to put out some content so I can put out testimonials of the results I'm getting and let people know that this is the work I'm doing. And so <laughs> it all happened by accident. I was, and thank God for Anchor, man. Anchor, I don't know if you recommend Anchor to people or not, um, but Anchor is what I use. Do you recommend Anchor to people or, you, or do you have different... Uh, well, no, I mean, I, I don't I don't have anything against Anchor because, you know, Anchor, Anchor allows people, you know, to be able to take your phone and, 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 and get it, get the job done. I, I recommend that people get it done the best way they can get it done because people <laughs> put their own excuses. So, hey, I'm not I'm not taking nothing away from nobody. You say Anchor. Hey, Anchor. I respect it. I'm just asking the expert, man, because if you were like, Taj, I don't think you should use Anchor. Then I would listen to that advice and be like, you're right. I need to do something about it. But um. <laughs> Long story short, man, I was putting out content and I wasn't really, um, I noticed that people were watching the clips, but let's say if you do a five to 10 minute video, I started YouTube first and then I was putting up these five to 10 minute videos on YouTube or I might do like a 20, 30 minute interview with the client I was working with. And then I was taking smaller clips, you know, repurposing content, taking those smaller clips and putting them on social media. And I was like, okay, people are loving the clips and liking the clips and commenting and sharing the clips, but they're not clicking the link to watch the full video. And so at that point I'm like, okay, well, I got to figure out a way to get this get this content in front of people so it's not just sitting there collecting dust on YouTube. And this was right around the time that I heard about Anchor. So I'm like, oh, this is perfect. This the star the stars couldn't have aligned any better than this. So I started taking those long form videos and just uploading them to Anchor and distributing it. And so it was great. And so originally, and it's evolved over the years cuz what what I started doing in 2019, like I said, was just solo episodes and then me interviewing clients I was working with. And then really over the past really year and a half, two years, I've shifted my focus to, you know, I'll still do a solo episode every now and then, but now I want to interview other athletes. I mean, the name of the podcast is called Thrive After Sports. So I didn't want it to just be me and my clients. I wanted it to be like, man, look at all these other examples of former athletes from all different types of backgrounds who are now thriving in what they're doing, you know? former Olympians, former professional athletes, of course, former collegiate athletes, they have businesses, they're, they're CEOs, they're, you know, they're doing their thing. And so um, it's a, it's, I want it to be a place where former athletes can go and be like, man, look at all these examples of people who are just killing it and getting inspired and having different people from different backgrounds. But that's how the podcast came about. And that's what it's evolved into. Yeah, man. I mean, just just hearing hearing you talk about, it, I, I like I can I can hear the excitement in your voice just about you know the conversations you're getting to have with people, and I I think it's even a full circle moment going back to what we were talking about earlier, as you were talking about relationships and you know having a podcast is allowing you to create and cultivate more and different relationships from people that you know you may or may not have had the opportunity to connect with uh, without having a podcast. So I think I mean I, I think I think that's I think that's pretty dope, man. To be able to, you know, leverage it in that way and and utilize that the platform. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, podcast yeah. is a game changer. I'm I'm preaching to the choir on that one, especially yeah. people that listen to this show. Man, say po- podcast, is, bro. It's it's unreal. If you if you really like, because bro, I, I listen to any and almost not every, but I listen to just a lot of different podcasts just to see what else is out there. But it's unreal the amount of information that people really give on podcasts and they just they put it out there and people who there's some people who take the information and they they use it and they win. And some people who hear it, they're like, oh, that's cool. And they just move on. But it's unre- it's it's literally it, it's literally over a million dollars worth of game. Right. Literally. Yeah. You Man. get like I listen to a bunch of different podcasts, too. And like every day you can learn something that's going to help you tremendously like you said like tremendously there's something on every like it's unbelievable man what a time to be alive bro what a time to be alive (laughs) what a time to be alive that man that's that's correct that's correct so speaking of speaking of being alive okay i'm a transition (laughs) i'm a transition and i want to just hear who would be you you so you're gonna have a dinner right and i want to hear who's coming to dinner you get three guests living or dead who's coming to dinner and why man nipsey hustle um 
I'm a California boy, so that was that was a tough loss for me. And I've always looked up to Nipsey Hustle for, of course, the music, but the entrepreneurial side more than anything. Um, so Nipsey Hustle for sure. Uh, you know what? I might have to get Ed Milet in there. I want Ooh, Ed Milet to, okay, to show up yeah. to dinner. So, you know, I know he's a he's he's a former athlete, so I think he would understand the mission and um, give some really solid business advice. So we got Nipsey, Ed Milet, and then. Um, who else, man? That's tough. That's tough. Uh, maybe Gary V. You know what I'm saying? I need some social media help, man. Mm. You know, I, w- I would want to get some free game from Gary V. Like, take a look at my okay. profile. I know it's trash, but help me step it up, Gary V. <laughs> Tell me what to do. <laughs> man, that's a that's a well rounded trifecta. There's a there's this video of Nipsey Hustle and uh, Gary V. Actually hanging out in the studio. So that's that's they already got to hang out together, you know. I might as well be a fly on the wall. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, that's I mean, that's 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 solid though, because that they're from three total different arenas. Gen- genius, Tosh. Genius. Wait, Jonathan, am I allowed to ask who's yours? Uh, ask? man. Now I'm curious, bro. Uh. <sighs> Who would be my three? Okay. Um, one would be one would be Nori from mm. the Drink Champs podcast. That's a great choice. Yeah, bro. He he does his research. He does his research. Even if somebody else does it for him and gives it to him, he got to be able to take take in the information. So, <laughs> so okay, so Nori would be one. Uh my second one. My second one would be, ooh, I, I don't want to do all podcasters, but I'm feeling like I'm about to do all podcasters. Hey, that's the lane. Gosh, Todd. Gosh, gosh, gosh. Okay, so okay, so Nori would be one for sure. The second mm-hmm. one would have to be. The second one would have to be Kanye, bro. Mm, Kanye okay. would have to be the second one because his marketing. His marketing is unreal. Right. It's, it's unreal. And man, the third, the third and the final seat at the table. The third and the final seat for me would be Coretta Sky King. Mm. Just just because to hear what it's like being in her position. Because we always hear about Dr. Martin Luther King. We always hear about him. But we we hear very little about her. That's deep. That's a great list, man. Has anybody ever, ever asked you your three before? Nah, bro. You're the first one. We got a first. We, I might <laughs> ask you on my podcast, too. I want to, I just real quick, I know we, we're coming up on time, but Nori, the fact that you put Nori on there, that's super that's an underrated podcast host right there and i just realized that when you said it like that's genius because everybody loves watching drink champs yes it's entertaining but i never it never occurred to me how skilled he actually was because you get caught up in the entertainment and the jokes but now i'm like he actually is a really skilled host and i that had never occurred to me before so that's genius i respect that that's a great list i i appreciate it man but yeah he bro he 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 really is he really is skilled because of this because of this i'm about to get real transparent on, on here which <laughs> <laughs> so and, and and just stick with me for this brief story i remember when i was in college and we were in a we were in like a, a small it was a small city it was tyler texas so fairly small and we were we went out to a party you know college college students so we were drinking and then we went on the basketball court and one of my homeboys went and he dunked while he was drunk. And I was like, man, I can go and do it. I tried to do it and I like jumped sideways. It was weird. It was awkward. Everything like that. Why am I bringing up that story? Because of the amount of alcohol that Nori drinks on that show and to still be coherent enough to ask questions that are thought provoking questions and then still run a hour, two hour, three hour, sometimes four hour long show. It's different, bro. It's different. Yeah, that's impressive. 
that's that's another great point. His tolerance must be just like either he doesn't feel it anymore, or he just <laughs> you know he's capable of just. Some people are great operating drunk, you know, or, or under that the influence, true. which is so. I mean, man, Nori, that was that was totally out of left field, but that was like, man, that was huge. That's a great choice, bro. I can't even. I need to process that for a little bit. Like this man said, Nori. Bro. I'm about to go watch Drink Champs later and just observe the greatness now. Bro, I've been I've been going back watching old ones. They're so, so good because this is going to be the last thing. We're going to shift back to you. Okay. okay. Just <laughs> because think about the caliber of guests he has. He he he's had he's had Melissa Ford on his show. He's had the Brandon Marshalls. He's had all, the whole crew from I Am Athlete and slash The Pivot. Like. He's had all these people and he's asking the questions that we would want to know, not what he would want to know. He asked the questions that we want to know. And I'm like, how did, first of all, how did you pull up this about this person from back then? We didn't even know about this, that, or whatever. And then he gets him to add, man. Okay. This is going to be Todd. This is going to be the last thing. I promise. This is the last thing. The last hey, I'm thing. listening, bro. I'm listening. Bro. I was, I was watching the other day cause he interviewed Cameron. And he asked Cameron about the beef he had with Jay Z. He said, "said they squashed it, and moved on." But then he said, "Cause Cameron told him that he he said trash a Jay Z verse." Cause Jay Z walked in the studio, told Kane, "He's like, hey man, put me on that." And he was like, "Man, what? Yeah, whatever, man. Get get on get on the verse, whatever." He let him rap, and he was like, "Man, that's trash. Take that off of here." <laughs> a Jay Z verse, bro. Wow. <laughs> hey, hey, that's all I'm saying. That's crazy. Crazy, bro. Anyway, this this is this is just your episode, man. It's, this is your episode. So so look, so look, we're about to about to do another transition. About to do another transition. Okay. Uh and, and this is the rapid fire segment I like to call it this or that. And this was this was inspired by drink champs, in a sense. That's right. So, uh, and you're going to pick one answer or the other. Taj, are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Apple or Android? Apple. Summer or winter? Summer. <laughs> Showers or baths? Showers. Birthdays or weddings? <sighs> Man, I got a wedding coming up in a few months. You know, I'm I'm not into birthdays. I'm gonna go with weddings. Big party, or small gathering. Small gathering. I'm an introvert, man. I can only handle so much human interaction. So I'm going with that small, intimate. <laughs> fair small enough, setting. man. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair enough, man. Fair enough. Taj, please let let people know how they can find you, follow you, uh, and connect with you, and everything like that. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, man. Um, I would say go to TajDeshaun.com. That's the hub for everything. The Thrive After Sports podcast is available on all podcast platforms. So just look it up. Um, I always tell people if you're a former athlete, you need some help. we got some free services available, so don't hesitate to reach out. Um, but yeah, TajDeshaun.com is where you want to go for, for everything. I'm Taj Deshaun on all social media platforms, but all that's on the website too. So, And Jonathan, thank you for having me, man. This, is, this has been a blast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't don't run just yet. I'm going to do one more commercial break and I'm coming back to you with the final thought to close us out. So family, uh, like I said before, if you're a speaker, you're a coach, you're a consultant and you you're tired of beating your head against the wall. Right. You're trying to get your voice out there. You want to be the authority and the go to expert in your field. Well, you want to sign up for this training that we have coming up. You can go to get paid with podcasting dot com. Don't do entrepreneurship alone, y'all. Get paid with podcasting.com. I want to show you how you can take a podcast and ultimately leverage your expertise to turn it into a profitable business. Now, back to Taj for his final thought. My final thought? There's no prompt or anything? Just any, anything I have on my mind? Your final thought, man. It's on you. My final thought for anybody tuning in right now, whatever you want to do, Make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Make sure you get with other people who believe in what you believe in. And even when you feel like giving up, keep going. Because chances are, if other people are doing the same thing you're doing, 
then you're probably helping other people with what you're doing. So those of you who tune into this show, those of you who know Jonathan, you know what that, that mission is about. He wants to help you avoid some of the stuff he went through. So that's my final thoughts. Just stay consistent, get around the right people. Don't give up on your mission because somebody needs it. There it is. There it is. From the man, the myth, the legend himself. There, there it is, family. Uh, I want to encourage. I want to encourage everybody who's who's tuning in. If you watched on YouTube, then of course you know you got to drop a comment down in the comment box, man. Just 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 let Taj, aka TD, you know, let him know where he <laughs> scored today. You know, with, with with his gems, let him know what what gems hit home. <laughs> let him know. I like what, that. What, <laughs> it, it makes sense. You're a former football player too. It really makes sense now. It, it just really makes it really makes sense man it really makes sense <laughs> but like, like i said before y'all make sure that you you drop a comment down on, on youtube and then uh i want you also to to follow taj follow taj blow up his dm let him know uh how, how the interview helped you let him know what you took away but until next time family remember that this is the your podcast mentor show where we help you build your platform so that you can profit on purpose from your podcast. Till next time, peace and God bless.